Joyce Reardon closed her eyes as the dial tone began to rasp its mind-numbing noise into her ear. The Wheaton sister's father had hung up on her. She hadn't even managed to exchange a single word with Rachel. Now, she wasn't sure if she dared to try again, or if that would get Rachel into trouble. Truth be told, she wasn't too keen on having another altercation with Mr. Wheaton. Herself, crazy lady, he, call, he had called her. And for the first time since she had, since her, well, since her interest in Rose Red and Elena Rimbauer started, Joyce wondered if she was crazy. Perhaps she was just pushing things too far, but she had always invested a lot of time and money into it. Obsession. Project. And she would get this one chance to pull it off. A single chance to unite, to unit science and belief. It would be the biggest scientific breakthrough mankind would ever see. It was never about the money, though not for Joyce. It wasn't even about the fame. It was about finally having all that, all her hard work acknowledged. But that wasn't all. It was to know for one moment, before she shared her results with others, she would be the only person in history who really, truly knew. And now all that was in jeopardy. She could almost feel the disapproval of Rose Red, of Ellen Rimbauer. You ruined it, Joyce. You ruined it. I'll get her. Joyce promised. The empty room. I will get Annie Wheaton to Rose Red if it's the last thing I do. She could have sworn she could feel a cold hand touch the back of her neck, but it was probably just her imaginations. Yes, that's right. Just her imaginations. Like how the noise from her phone that was still on hook seemed to resemble whispering. Whispers for a moment. Come and help us, Joy. She stared at the phone for a moment, then put it back on the side table and shook her head a little. No phantom whispers, no ghostly touch. The only thing haunting her here, lack of sleep and proper food. Actually, she couldn't remember the last time she ate. Steve had tried to get her to come with him out to dinner with the orientation this evening distract her from the stunt that ass Bullinger had pulled, but she had insisted that he drive her straight home instead. She had made, had made it clear that tonight he wasn't invited to share her bed either. She wasn't going to admit that she had been a bit disappointed at how easily he had accepted that, but sayings were cooling down between them and had been for a while. Joyce, instead, insisted on blaming it on the stress, but she knew it was her fault. She didn't give him the love that he needed, the love that he deserved, and once all of this was over, she promised herself she would give him all her of her attention again. She didn't know that she was even lying to herself by believing this. She hadn't slept in weeks. What little sleep she had managed to get between her work and her manic research was fractured and strange, plagued by disturbing and sometimes erotic nightmares. In some of those dreams, she was seduced by Eleanor Ringborough and Sukina. And while she knew throughout the act that they would end up killing her, this very knowledge seemed to excite her even further. Just before her climax, she would look up at her lover and realize that they were in fact rotting corpses. That she had been making love to death. But even that didn't seem to put her off. She woke up from her dream screaming in horror and perverted pleasure. With the sheets soaked in sweat, she could stare up at the ceiling for hours willing her pounding heart to calm down and her aroused body to go back to sleep. 
More than once, she had to finish with the dream started by touching herself, with trembling fingers until she orgasmed, all the while bathing in conflicted thoughts. This is wrong. It feels good. She didn't know what was happening to her. It felt as if her thoughts and emotions weren't her own, as if somebody else was in charge of her. Not all of the time, but little by little, the feeling seemed to grow. Small sayings, mostly. She could look at the notebook and find a note she couldn't remember writing. Sometimes she zoned out in the middle of a conversation, but it wasn't like a daydream. It was more as if, Come with me, Joyce. As if somebody had taken her by her hand and led her away from her own mind for a while, showing her something, perhaps giving her something. A tool, a hammer. Help us build. A chill crept down her spine and she shivered. For the brief moment, her breath was visible and the temperature of the room dro suddenly dropped several degrees. But Joyce was unaware. She cocked her head to the, s the side, as if she was listening to someone, although there was no one in the room but her. A tear seeped out of the corner of her hazel eyes, trickled down her cheek, as she listened to the silence turning into voices. Another tear overflowed her other eye and clung to her eyelashes. For a moment, before stretching a wet trail across her pale skin, she listened to the bodiless voices that told her the darkest secrets of the universe. Secrets so terrible, they threatened to push her over the edge of insanity. After a while, she began to smile. Still with tears running down her faces, it was a terrifying smile, dedicated and desperate, and somehow dead, as if the woman behind it was being carved out like a pu Halloween pumpkin. Professor Joya Reardon was no psychic, but she possessed a powerful trait that Rose Red had found very useful, her obsession.